Hi everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Hey, you want to have some fun with some plain old index cards and make really cute little embellishments for our junk journals? Uh, if you want to, stay tuned and I'll show you some ideas. Here's just one idea I started with and I thought I'd bring you along the ride for a whole bunch of ideas. Um, but basically, I took an index card and I did a little stamping on the back and inking. Then on the front, I mounted some coffee dyed paper and then I did a little bit of uh, watercolor on it and just turned the brush strokes into butterflies and put a little stamp. And it's such an easy thing that anybody can do. Um, and it's a great way to use up your scraps as well. So if you happen to um, go down to the Dollar Tree, they usually have index cards and they're quite thin and, and which actually makes them very nice for junk journaling. But if you want to make them a little bit thicker and a little bit sturdier, mounting something to the back of them can work really well. So let me give you some ideas on different things that you can do with this. And I'm gonna try and use very basic, simple supplies. All right, so let's take a look, see, see what we got going here. Let's make a little elbow room. Okay, so here is my little index card. And this little index card, if anybody wants to know, it's a three by five. Hello, Holly. That's the African gray in the kitchen. Yes, always having something to say. Um, so what I did first was I just used some, you can use any glue here, but I used Scotch Create Permanent Glue Stick, which is just my favorite glue stick. And I put um, some glue on the back of this guy making sure to get the corners very well. Okay, of course getting glue all over everything. And I do have a plastic mat underneath my gluing area here just because I'm a messy gluer, but do you, you know you can always glue onto catalogs or any old book pages or something that you might have. Okay, and now we're all sticky and ready to go. So if you have any paper that you like hanging around, something that's pretty or something that's maybe even not so pretty, which we're going to use next and see if we can turn it into something pretty. Um, but you can go ahead and just lay this guy down and then you can cut this out any way you like. And I just happen to have the old metal ruler and my craft mat. I'm just going to cut that out to size. It makes a quick short work of this. And uh, these are easy to mass make. You can have a whole bunch. Um, I could have done better there, right? Yes, gotten a little, a little sharper on the edge there. I didn't line it up perfectly, but um, there we go. Just trim it up a little bit. And okay, I mean, it's already pretty, right? And let's say we have a little tear there at the edge. What can we do about that? Where's the big rescue there? Well, you could come along with some brown ink and just ink it up. How about there? Gone. Okay. So that gives a base. And um, what I did with the other one was I just wanted some butterflies on it. And I just happened to have this fan brush and some Jane Davenport watercolors. And I've, I've been missing watercoloring, so I thought it might be fun to do a little watercoloring. But there's a million and one things you can do with this, and I'll show you different options. So uh, one is just watercolor. And uh, um, having some paper on top of the index card will help some of the wrinkling because it's not technically watercolor paper, but you could actually stick a piece of watercolor paper on the back of your index card as an option. So over here, I think let's make uh, an orange one that might show up well. I'm gonna saturate um, the brush well, and I'm gonna use the brush to make wings. So there's not much technique here involved in other than uh, just pressing. And there, I've got a butterfly. And this is just, maybe it's a moth. It only has two wings. I don't know. I don't know if moths have two wings and butterflies have four. That's a good question. Anybody know? Um, okay, I'll just do some different angles here. Maybe we'll give some with four wings. Okay, we'll try this one with four wings. We'll just try it. There we go. There we go, a four-winged butterfly. Could also be mistaken as a flower in some parts of the world, um, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. So these you can take in any direction. Um, maybe we'll do some red ones. I'll just kind of blend some red in there. I'm trying to think of colors that will pop against this brown a little bit. Okay, do one there and one there. Okay, maybe he's... He, oh, I should have probably had something underneath me. Oh, well, there we go. Making a mess on the mat, of course. Um, doop. okay. Okay, that's a dysmorphic butterfly, but it happens, you know, and there are some that are like that in life. That's right. Maybe I'll try these backwards, see what that looks like. Okay. Yeah, all butterflies are different, right? There you go. Okay. 
So just making those out with the, um, the shape of the brush itself. And there, now as that's absorbing, um, let me see what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a fatter one this time. This is a Faber Castell medium artist pen. Uh, it's a little like fat nub like that. And let's try the driest one. I'm just going to do little butterfly bodies. Butterfly body. Oh, it doesn't look that fat now. Okay. Very simple. Just something very loose. Okay. And a butterfly head. And you could do these with pencil too. That would work. Or the Stabilo. That would work. Okay, and this guy, he's going, he's going up. Probably should wait for your paper to dry, but you know me. Oh, always, uh, always moving right along. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we've got some basic background loose butterflies. Um, and what I did was I, I used the crocodile corner chomper to cut some corners on this paper. You don't have to do this. And if you don't have this, I would just recommend taking something with a circular edge, like maybe the base of your glue stick cap and just running a pencil line around there and then fussy cutting around the corner. That will work. Um, or you could just use a pretty uh, Fiskar scissor edging scissors and do something pretty on the edge. Like a million and one things you could do. Okay, so see, I mean, that came together very quickly. And uh, then I just stamped the word blessings on here. Whoop, almost put it upside down. Not that that would be a tragedy. Maybe put it here this time. So it shows. Okay. And um, now I'm just going to ink it up a little bit. Uh, where did I put my prototype? Oh, prototype. Oh, prototype. I know I hid you from... There you are. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here it is. Oh, I'm getting it out. Okay. So I inked around this uh, prototype with aged mahogany okay so but but maybe this one i might do black i'm just gonna i'm gonna try it i don't know just giving it a go here oh, i'll use this universal paddle brush that i that it broke the handle but it still works i'm pr pretty much using any color on here okay so just giving it that little vintage darkened up edge making the paper look a little more weathered a little more aged, a little more old, <laughs> kind of the way I feel lately. <laughs> okay, um, and I'm going to do that also on the back. Now you can leave the back completely plain, or you could jazz it up a little bit. I put a stamp on the other one, a rubber stamp, and um, I used a rose. You could use a word, you could use a, a bird, or a, you know another butterfly, or, or whatever you like. Yeah, you have full rain here to do whatever is your fancy so we have that and these do come together pretty quickly as you see and maybe i'll use the rose again but instead of black i'll do um the aged mahogany just for fun shake it up a little bit there we go so now we have that and we have that and how quickly that came together basically uh um just using up scraps on the desk and just uh, playing with a little bit of color so um, let's see what else we can make along this idea. I happen to have, uh, okay, I'll admit it. I had Chinese food last night and uh, here's the bag. Yep, and I thought, well, look at you little bag. You come along with me because you have possibilities, right? Um, so let's see if we can do the same thing, but use paper bag instead of coffee dyed paper. Cause I know everybody might not have coffee dyed paper. So let's try this. All right, let's cut our paper bag first. Give it a little zoom out, okay. So I'm just folding the paper bag up so I can do the fewest cuts possible to get some straightaways. You can do this with scissors or with any fancy cutter that you have. And I'm gonna use my old favorite craft knife. Yeah, good old craft knife, probably. Needs to have the blade changed. I'm a lazy blade changer as they go. Where's sunshine? Oh, I see him. He's sleeping over on the couch. Okay, all is well. Yes, took him out to the park today. And uh, we had a nice walk and there was some squirrel chasing and uh, uh, we had a good time. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, sometimes he conks out after a good, a good walk. All right, there we go. Let's see how far did I get? Almost. Almost. Okay, so now we've got some paper bag. Yeah. 
So let's find a straightaway in here. And here's some. And this is going to work very well. So I'm going to do the same process. I'm just going to goo up the back of um, this index card, which is kind of thin. So I think a little bit of thicker card might be nice. I right, really, these, these Dollar Tree ones are so thin. They're, they're almost like the thickness of coffee paper, just a hair, a hair fatter than coffee paper. So, uh, oh, I'm the messiest gluer in the world. Okay, here we go. So let's just align you at the top and then we'll do a little trimming. We'll do a little trimming. Okay, so we have that. And you could do a bunch of these, like you could lay down a bunch of these all at once and then trim them all out. And uh, like, in other words, mass trim, mass glue, mass trim. If you want to make, say, 10 at a sitting, something like that, that would be a nice option. Okay. So now we're going to see if the painting technique works on the paper bag, but I think we'll also do some other things too. So let's just, let's just have a play at this. And this is a pretty fast and easy, oh, we'll get you a little closer there. Well, okay, so we have nice uh, craft paper background and you can do anything with that. Actually, since we've already done the painting, let's try something different. Let's get the old uh, gelato, gelato guys out. I think they might pop more uh, better against this. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe. Okay, here's something, this looks bright against that. Let's try that. And I'm wondering if we can even use a stencil might work. I don't know. I don't know. Can you gelato through a stencil? We're going to find out. Here it comes. Hold your breath. Hold your breath, everybody. Okay, here's a stencil. Something. Hey, pastimes. That's nice. Let's see if I can get that to... Maybe I'll have to use my finger. I don't know if this will work. Does anybody stencil with... Uh... I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Does anybody stencil with gelatos? Well, here we go. Stenciling with gelatos. Here goes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, go let's take a peek. We're we getting enough impact. No, no, we're not. Okay, so let's try something else. Let's try. Should we try drawing right in? I don't think that's going to work. Okay, we won't do that. <laughs> okay, let's skip the stencil part. Part. We'll do. We'll do. We'll just draw with the uh, gelato. Okay, so I'm now going to attempt to do butterfly. This is just a loose butterfly, and butterfly wings. They really can come in any shape. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There we go. That's like generic butterfly shape. Weird, huh? I know. I know. But let's just go with it and see where we go. I think we can smudge this stuff. And I think you can add water to this stuff too. Um, but I'm just going to do dry right for right now. Just a little bit of smudging. Oh, and, and I think this is going to receive other colors well too. So let me uh, just try to continue with this. And maybe add some different colors. Oh, that's sort of a pretty color. It's, it's kind of a faint color. Maybe we need something a little more punch in it. Maybe, yeah. Let's go for more punch. How about this color? Oh, here we go. All right. How about some blue? I'm going to put some blue circles on this guy. How about that? Okay. And then maybe, what does he want? He wants some orange hue. Oh, that's kind of similar to the, the craft color. So let's not do too much of that. Let's go for more contrasting colors. What about this distress crayon? I have no idea how this would. I know I'm always nervous about these. Okay. Okay. There we go. Give him a little tail. There we go. All right. Let's see if we can smudge these a little bit. I always want to smudge everything. That's my goal, I think, in life is just to smudge everything. Let me just maybe give you a border of this. This is kind of pretty. Yeah. There, okay, and I come around. Okay, and down here. Okay, smudging. And we'll smudge. Smudge for the sake of smudge. You don't have to smudge. Smudging is purely optional. I, yep, it looks like a two-year-old made it. I know, I get that. I get that a lot. <laughs> All right, so let's find a pan with maybe a fatter something or other. Okay, here's a Faber Castell, do, 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 B, which I think means bold. And this is in black, Pit Artist Pen. Um, okay, so, so this is just a loose little butterfly head. Okay. Okay. 
and however you like to do it. I mean, there's no real have to with any of this. It's just fun. And this is my footless butterfly. This butterfly has no legs. It's just, uh, um, okay, Mary wants eyes. Okay, get my eyes. Get my eyes. There we go. We got eyes. No legs, though. No legs for you. <laughs> and um, let us, hmm, what else can we play with? Here's some makeup. Let's play with some makeup. Uh, what do we got in here? We've got all sorts of shimmery shinies. Let's maybe put some, what do we got? Uh, maybe, okay, purple. Why not? Let's try that. I don't know. What's that going to do? I have no idea. I'm just going to put it in the background and see what happens. Just rubbing on some color. So if you've got some makeup hanging around doing nothing, just remember it's a it is a it's a color basically it's just extra color and extra extra stuff for you to play with so don't forget about the stuff that you have around you don't always have to go buy the fancy stuff all right well mega mess here today okay so we have this now um let me try a different cutting on the sides just so we can see some options and let me grab some fiskar scissors that might be fun oh and i've got these these are like little baby pinking scissors let's try that okay i don't know okay maybe just fold this and do that okay that sort of worked and we'll do that again so, there there we go now we have some fancy edging and let's see what would we like to do around the mountain with this guy maybe we will Let's see if I can find something different, like maybe a bright green or something like that might be nice. Oh, I do have blue. That might pop with the blue. Let's try that. All right, if you insist, we will use blue today. So I'm hoping this is just, um, I don't know. I don't know what this is doing, but uh, just uh, asking creativity to go in a direct, different direction, using up the scraps on the desk, saying, hey, what can we make out of this that would be kind of cool? with the supplies we have on hand, as opposed to always running and trying to get new stuff. Sometimes um, just recreating what we've got with the old stuff, it, it, you know, there's always new possibilities of the combinations we can make with, we can make things with different combinations. Oh, that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Yeah, the way that kind of really pops out like that. Okay, um, all right, we'll just go around. You could do a different color on the back or the same. And you could actually hue the back and you could leave it completely white, which is perfectly fine. Or you could go over it with, um, let's say you're like, oh, but I, I want it to look more weathered or something. You could just go lightly with your um, ink dauber and darken it up a little bit. Maybe corners or something a little bit more, something like that, doing some hueing. You could multi-hue with different colors. I don't know what's on this. We'll just give it a rub. I think it's got some black and some aged mahogany on it. Oh my God, I'm getting this all over my desk. Okay, but that gives you like a completely different background. Okay, okay. So now we have this guy. Isn't he just amazing? And um, where's our, let's see if I, I've completely buried my, um, there they are, the prototypes. Okay. So boy, have I got, have I got stuff on the desk? Let me tell you. So you can do abstract art. You can do quickie hand drawn art, which it, I think it comes out adorable. Um, these are totally fun and you could put a word on that if you like to. Um, and, or word stamps as I did. Um, but let's make another one and let's use something different because goodness knows there's no shortage of scraps around these parts. And let me grab some other scrap okay come here other scrap other scrap of scrappiness what have we got here all right not that not that hang on okay so here is a book page that I hand dyed in to, in some specialty color inks and it's kind of got a crinkly feel to it and it's just got some pretty sayings on it but I thought maybe I might like to use this as the back and let me give that a go okay so here there's lots of words is it going to cover the words? Am I going to get the words? How much words am I going to get? Maybe like that. That might be good. Okay. I have to turn it over. So now I don't know what I'm getting. Okay. That's all right. We'll just wing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe this one I will sew just as a, an option. 
probably should not use a lot of glue on this if I'm going to sew it. I just got the sewing machine back and it's all spank and clean and everything. And I'm very excited. And here I come with the glue ready to gum it up. Well, I hope the sewing guy's not watching uh, who, where I got it fixed. Oh, did I get the lecture? Let me tell you. Um, and uh, uh, I got everything from you're using the wrong thread to using the wrong bobbin, which I probably am, which I probably am. And he's like, you know, you can't use old string and thread. And I'm like, oh, he has no idea how much old string and old thread I have. I'm like the queen of old string and old thread. Do I admit it? Well, maybe you can watch my videos and find out how about that. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, oh, there's the ruler. All right, let's get the ruler going here. And let's just... <laughs> cut this off and let's see how this goes all right so I hope that you're having uh, some time for paper refund today um, doesn't have to be complicated doesn't have to be difficult or it can be and that's fun too um, just take it wherever you want it and uh, know that it is there um, for you anytime yeah, the paper waits for you which is kind of nice right yeah okay here we go all right so now what do we have okay we have half a poem on here all right so now I got to figure out how to make that come to life well first of all I think we're going to try and sew it all right let us uh there's the sewing machine did you Boop. okay well, I gotta bring it over here come here sewing machine let me move everything out of the way oh yeah let me move this over here okay and it's coming in wrong thread and all okay I think I have the right thread in the bobbin because he, he changed it for me but uh he was not happy with my upper thread oh well here we go all right um no i'm not going around the corners i'm going to turn it on and i'm going to zigzag stitch it so one two three four is my zigzag stitch going down somebody said place the needle in first that gets you started okay i missed i missed the paper completely oh well <laughs> here we go and we're zigging and we're zagging and it's a little baby zigzag it's just a tiny one. I guess I could make it wider, but that's okay. Um, one more. All right, let's turn the paper. It does note so nicely, though. I don't, I don't hear any choking or crunching or fussing or slumping. Nobody's getting stuck. Everybody seems to be happy. Yay! Okay, let's turn it. Okay, well, I could have gotten closer to the edge there. Oh, totally missed the edge. That's all right. It, it happens. Okay, here we go. Would have been helpful if I had my glasses. Almost done, almost done. And quick back and forth just to tie that off because it's a little thicker, so that's okay. I think you can handle it. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Ta-da! Not bad, huh? Okay, so that's another look. If you wanted to do something like that, um, then that will give you another way to uh, do your, um, these little journal cards. And let's see if we can ink this guy up a little bit. Maybe we'll do pink on him just to look at something different. Uh, sure, why not? All I have to do is locate the pink. Of course, now I find the green, so let's go with green. All right, now I gotta find the dauber. Where is the dauber? Digging, digging. I think that's the green dauber. I, I tied little strings on here so I would know because sometimes the dauber gets dark looking, especially if you accidentally cross pollinate like I do a lot. Um, you can't quite tell what color it was supposed to be originally. And um, it kind of kind of keeps things a little bit organized if there's such a thing in a craft room, right? Mm, I don't know about that. Oh, it's a hot, steamy day here today. I hope it's comfy wherever you are. And hello to everybody all over the world. I think it's so amazing that, uh, you know, something like crafting pa paper brings so many of us together um, in so many different walks of life. I think it's kind of cool. All right, so we now ha we have something like this. And I think that's kind of cool, but maybe we can amp it up just a smidge more. Maybe we want to go ahead and do something around the back here. All right. Do some green on this one. 
And I just had a little pile of postage stamps here and I thought that might be fun to play with. Um, maybe we can just put maybe a postage, oh, maybe even a postage stamp on the front might look cute because it looks like it, it wants something there, doesn't it? It's just like, put something here, something, anything. Okay, what are you, Valley Forge? That looks kind of cool. Um, let's see what else we have. These are from India. They're, they're pretty. I like the color contrast there. If we can get that one guy off. Well, they're kind of like a twosie. I might have to do a twosie. Okay, we could totally do that. I mean, even if it if it covers the words a little bit, I think that's okay because we we've just entered the world of collage. Yes, yes, we have. We've now entered the world of collage. Why is this brown? I think I'm just edging it a little bit so it pops a little bit. Oh, I'm just gonna glue it down. Nothing fancy. Nothing hard. If you don't have um, old stamps or stamps from other countries, just grab the ones off your junk mail. Uh, or make faux stamps. Wouldn't that be fun? We should make some faux stamps. I haven't done that in a long time. Um, I think I did a big faux stamp, but I don't think I've done little faux stamps. Yeah, that would be fun. Somebody write that down. Sunny? Sunny? No, still sleep, Mom. Okay, fine. All right, sorry. Didn't mean to bother you. Um, all right, here we go. There. All right, so now we have that. And what can we do on the back? Well, we could do, um, let's do something we haven't done yet. Let's maybe borrow something. Let's see, I'm just, I'm looking here, seeing what's close. Let's go, there's like so much stuff everywhere here. Oh my goodness, where do I even begin? Where, where, let me tell you, where do I begin? All right, here we go, here's something. All right, I have this book from this page from a field guide, um, or it's a nature book of some sort, but it's got some really pretty butterflies on it. So, all right, let me see if I can fussy cut one of these guys out. Um, how about you? All right, okay, here we go. Pam, fussy cutting. This is not going to be good. Um, I'm like the world's worst fussy cutter, but I don't care. I think it's fun. <laughs> and uh, it helps when you have good scissors. So, you know, if you're going to fussy cut, Make sure you get the right scissors because it can just, if you're trying to use big scissors, clunky scissors, it's, it's, the, it's so much more laborious and uh, it's so much easier on your hands if you have one of these little tiny pair of fussy cutting scissors. And, and they probably have um, a special name, like uh, maybe they're called fussy cutting scissors. That's what they should be called or like fine or precise point or, or, or narrow tipped or get in there in the tiny cracks and crevices and crannies scissors those are the ones you want yeah and uh, okay this guy's just got all sorts of stuff to fussy cut around this is why they created stickers and then we have to deal with the back of the sticker so you know nothing nothing there's a, there's a little challenge for everything okay there isn't that pretty that's just so pretty the way it is i don't know it's just ah uh, yeah it's crazy isn't it get so excited about paper me silly goose <laughs> Well, you know, keeps me off the street. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, so here we go. Let's put you on a little bit of an angle. That's kind of nice. There, very nice, simplistic, um, looking very different from our other designs, but this is all the same basic concept. All right, who keeps moving these? Is it, is it? No, here they are, right where I left them. Hey, figures. All right, I mean, look how quickly you can just put these together without batting an eye. And they're just so much fun to make. So let's make one more. And we'll try and use something that's actually on the desk. Um, okay, here is the index card. Whoop, there goes the paper. All right, let's put our glue on because that's where we're going to start. And I was thinking maybe some dictionary paper or old book paper. Well, we kind of did old book page, but or um, music paper might be pretty. Mm-hmm. And I thought I had some here. Let me see. Let me do a quick rummage here. Rummage, rummage, rummage. What do I got? Rummage, 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 rummage. Aha, here's a very old newspaper. Well, that's not enough though. We need more. We need more. Oh, I have some old ledger. Yeah, maybe let's, whoa, yeah, let's use that. That might look cool. All right, here we go. Some old ledger, and even if we have to add something to it, that's okay, but this, I just love this stuff, and I want to use up every tiny little bit of it because it's so amazing and so precious, and uh, 
I can't pick this up now because I've glued it to the mat. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. So I have that. So let's cut that off. We're almost home. And I have a little idea for the top. Let's try a little topper. Let's put a little topper on this guy. Um, okay, craft knife's gone. Okay, we have another one. Yep, the messy crafter strikes again. Okay, there we go, we're done. That, okay, oh, that's the old paper. So we have a little strip up here, but let me get like a little frilly or something. Okay, I'm gonna try a gluing and scrunching technique. Don't know if this is gonna work. I'm gonna try it with Fabrifix. Are you stuck? You might be stuck on me, huh? Okay, that's all right. We'll get the pin, get the pin out. Somebody get the pin out. Here we go, getting the pin out. All right, clearing the deck. Sugar icing piping bottle that I transferred my Fabrifix into just for easier application. It gives a thinner stream, but because you have the thinner hole, sometimes it'll get plugged. So you have to go in there with a pin and free it up a little bit. It's still kind of plugged, so we're gonna free it up a little bit more. This is live crafting. Live crafting on TV. Here you go. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, let's try that now. Should be better. All right. All right, yeah. Okay, here we go. We have a, we have a stream. We have a stream. Okay. Okay, I think that should be enough. A little more in this area. Yeah, okay. And a quick finger smoosh, just to flatten it. And let's hope we can find an, oh, we found an end. Yay, we found an end. Okay, so we're just gonna place and scrunch. Place, oh, it's just sort of going down, isn't it? A little bit of a rumply roo. So I'm, I'm rumpling, I'm ruching. I'm probably ruching. Am I ruching? Does anybody know? I think I'm ruching as I go. And, uh, which I think means kind of like scrunch the fabric. I think that's the technical, probably not, don't quote me, um, term for ruching. Uh, but anyway, that's what I think I'm doing. Here we go. Getting close to the end and the little uh, scrunchy ruche is appearing before the eyes. And hopefully if all goes well and Fabrifix does what we know it can do, we don't have to sew this, which is awesome. Yeah, isn't that cute? That's just so cute, isn't it? I mean, and you could just keep going from here. Like, for example, um, oh, I, I got these other things. I really need to pull them out every once in a while. Maybe I'll, these little flat back pearls. I gotta remember I have this stuff. Sometimes if I don't turn around and open those drawers, they, it's like they don't exist. And that's not, that's not good. Oh, okay, let's just pull out that. Well, of course I got the big ones. All right, but you could use the smaller ones. They're not as bumpy, but let's just put one, two of these down, maybe three. Can we put a big one in the middle? Remember these are kind of bumpy, so they'll bump up your journal a little bit. So you might want to use the smaller ones. Um, but they're kind of cute to use. And you can get these everywhere, pretty much. All sorts of places online. I think that's the middle. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that pretty? Maybe I'll put just little ones on the edges. Of course, now I, I would like matching ones. And I don't have matching ones. Let's see if I can find close to matching. And coming down the home stretch. There we go. Okay, there's two. I think they're close. Okay, now this is going to be interesting. Here we go. We're going to place the little half back pearl. Okay, uh, is there gonna be enough glue to stick? Which is always helpful. There we go, push, well, that wasn't too bad. Sometimes this is where having a little glue on your fingers helps because you can you, you can become your own tweezers. That's right. All right, whoop. Okay, there we go. Now let's pop this little baby down. Where are you gonna go? Where do you wanna go? Right here, right here, it's a perfect spot. Just put me down. Okay, all right, I'm trying, I'm trying. No, I'm off, not. Not exactly where I want to be. Oh, I'm off in the, I'm off in the bushes. <laughs> Help! No, you're okay. I got you back. You're pretty much back. You're back. Is that cute? This is so darn cute. I, I don't know. Um, doesn't take much. Doesn't take much, you know. Okay. So, no end to the fun you can have with a gosh darn index card. So I hope you had fun. Let me ink this up a bit. It's already aged, so it doesn't really need a lot of aging, but 
I'm here. It's here. I'm in an inky mood. Let's ink a little bit. Um, yeah, so if you find uh, you had a good time here, you find fun or you have value, please like, subscribe, and share. And um, please, uh, uh, if you're looking for any of my links, I have an Etsy shop. Everything is located down below uh, in the drop down box. If you're interested in actual old papers for your junk journals, uh, things like old ledger and hand dyed papers and things like that, I do sell ephemera collections and I try and put a few in the shop. Um, every now and then so if you come by and check that out you'll see ephemera collections and those are just the papers there no there's no journal in there it's just the uh, all sorts of interesting different papers about a hundred and uh, those are available and I mail them directly to you and uh, there we go let's maybe put one stamp on the back of something and um, also in there are my vintage digital kits as well as um, uh, if I have any uh, completed junk journals or junk journal bundles or junk journal kits, things like that, you'll find those there for sale. And um, uh, if you haven't signed up, please sign up for my free monthly emailed newsletter where you get a free digital image mailed to you each month. Uh, and also some um, uh, junk journal tips, updates from me, a note from the bookmaker that you're welcome to use, and also a checklist of supplies which you can download. And there's all sorts of different things to keep your eyes open there. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do Ode to the uh, ledger page. I'm just going to put a tiny square of it on this side. So there we go. I'm just going to put it right there. Yeah. Almost in a stamp-like form. Yeah, a stamp doesn't even have to be a real stamp. It can be anything. Um, put in that place. Our eye just thinks it's a stamp. And uh, there you go. Um, oh, that's that's... That's got pretty calligraphy on it. Maybe we want to use that side. Okay. All right. Oh, no, got it. Whoops. There we go. Gosh, yeah. Oh, boy. To be able to write like that, that would be amazing. Um, so I have podcasts. They come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. If, you, if you're interested in those, they're all audio and they're free to listen to. And there's over three years worth now. And... Um, what else? Um, got a Facebook group. Come on over and join the Facebook group. We're doing fun uh, things with weekly and monthly challenges and all sorts of things related to the videos put out by me at the Paper Outpost here. So come on over and have some fun with us. Love to see you over there. And um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, Eastern Time, 7 a.m. And uh, uh, you can find me on interest, pin, interest. <laughs> Instagram, Pinterest, Etsy, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, and Facebook. And um, just remember that fun can be simple. And da 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 da, create with reckless abandon. Let's see what we made today. And I just, okay, where'd they go? Well, I don't understand it. How can they go anywhere? There's nowhere to go. There's just, where? I haven't moved. Well, okay, I moved a few times. Um, I, oh, I found them. Never mind. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine back on the farm. <laughs> okay, there you go, folks. I hope you had a blast. I always have a blast hanging out with you guys. So thanks very much. Take care and uh, create with reckless abandon, everybody. Have fun. Bye.